My name is Virus. We are DC949. And this is OCTF, five years and 50 minutes. You're all in the right place. Yes, it's like gym class. Um, and five years ago, uh, we invented and implemented a little game called, uh, well, originally it was called Amateur Capture the Flag, and then it became Open Capture the Flag. And uh, I guess we'll just have everybody stand up and say their names or, you know, so sort of know who we're talking to. Adrian. Adam. <laughs> CP. <laughs> Jeff Ball. Frank Two. A Pratt. <laughs> uh, history. So, uh, five years ago, uh, me and, and this guy over here, the redhead, Adam, um, we were walking around DEF CON. Uh, this is many moon ago, back when DEF CON was uh, at the Alexis Park. And there wasn't uh, a whole lot, right now there's, a, there's many DEF CON contests. There's mystery box, there's you know, contests and badges and you know, ninja party stuff you can take apart and everybody else who has a party has a badge and you can take stuff apart and there's karaoke and there's more contests than I can possibly even you know, remember. Uh, but it wasn't always that way. There was only maybe three or four contests originally. Uh, so there wasn't a whole lot of structured activities for attendees to do. I mean, you know, you could walk around, you could, you know, get on the most hostile network on earth and play around, which was cool, but like, that was it. You know, you could talk, which is, is, is not bad, but um, uh, obviously the, the cornerstone contest of, you know, DEF CON forever is CTF. And CTF is really cool, uh, but it suffers from, from one real uh, nail, which is not everybody can play. Right? I mean, CTF is awesome. Everybody would, you know, love to bash their brains up against some of the, you know, smartest guys out there on the net. But, you know, resources are limited. Not everybody can play their game. So, um, over half intoxicated banter one day, uh, me and Adam had a conversation, and I, you know, I kind of tossed the idea. I was like, Yo, what if we, what if we made a game that was like CTF, but everybody could play? And he kind of looked at me and said, well, that's, that's really cool. I don't know anything about doing that. You, 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 you want to do that? And I was like, no, we should go find somebody to do it. So we spent a year <laughs> looking for somebody else to, to host this contest. That would be fun for us to play. It would be like CTF, but everybody could play. And it would be this giant room. And you know, we'd all have crazy hacker good times. Uh, and nobody wanted to do it. Everybody said, oh, that sounds like a good idea. You should do it. So our grandmaster plan. <laughs> was to apply for, you know, talk to, talk to the goons and be like, yo, we'll, we'll run this contest and try to run this contest. And then we'd screw it up so badly that people would approach us and say, this is a really good idea, but you guys suck at it. And then we'd be like, oh, well, you, you, please, please. Because <laughs> we had so little faith in our own abilities. So we, you know, muscled up some moxie and, and had our, our one little computer with no paint on it. And like, I think it was like a, was it an aluminum or iron case or something that was yeah, heavy yeah. as hell. We tried to host it over Wi-Fi the first year. That was really smart. Uh, <laughs> and we set out to host this contest. And it had a million problems and was hardly ever up and had all kinds of, the finger of God was like flicking us off that day. It was not, it was not mm -hmm. friendly. Um, but the few people that came out to play had a lot of fun. And at the close of the contest, people walked up to us and said, wow, that was really cool. You guys had some serious problems. You should fix it. <laughs> oh, that's, that's, not, that's not the response I wanted. But that's what we got. So, um, yeah, five, you know, it, it started really fledgling, and then you know, a few years later we were still doing it, and by the time we ended, you know, what we thought would be very simple, you know, originally amateur-esque uh, services, you know, well, games turned into just these monster, monster challenges that would literally take years to create. I mean, by OCTF 3, which is, I think, where we changed the name from amateur to open, uh, the reason we changed the name is because other people would walk up to us and say, why do you guys call this amateur? This is not, it's not easy. <laughs> I mean, not that I would claim to be some, like, super, you know, Legat-style programmer, but, I mean, <laughs> you know, it was, it was unique enough to where somebody else felt that we needed to change the name, so we did. Uh, so I guess the rest of the panel is, um, over the years, we've gotten a whole lot of really nasty complaints of stuff we did to people's computer. Uh, so I figure we'll just uh, stand up and, uh, or, or, or we'll sit. Yeah, you guys want to sit. Yeah, make me stand. I see how it is. Uh, 
and just go over, I guess, some of the milestone services, some of the ones that were really popular, the ones that people, you know, remember. And then at any real time, if anybody has got anything they wanted to know or questions they've had over the years or is really upset about me blowing up their computer in year three, uh, just, you know, it's a panel. So feel free to get involved. And thank you. Thanks for interrupting. Stage ninja. <laughs> stage, stage ninja. Um, yeah, it's just, you know, feel free to shoot your hands up there and just get involved. Just real quick, guys. Uh, anyone in here actually play in OpenCTF over the last five years? Oh, wow. So I was expecting no one, so my next anecdote's not going to work. Um, so yeah, we're going to cover some services. Uh, and then kind of towards the end there, I think we're going to have a lot of time left. Uh, ask questions, maybe services you would like to understand how we did the back end, or what things we did and why we did them, and probably a lot about happy dance. Feel free to throw things at me. <laughs> All right. Um, one of the things that I liked running the contest was there was always a good range of services. So it didn't matter whether you were, you know, some guy off the street who, you know, didn't know a whole lot, or whether you've been doing this for years and you know, run your own pen testing company. You could come here, try and hack something, and have fun. Um, some of the stuff that I did uh, throughout the years have been crypto related, and some of it was simple, you know, telnet into this and. It gives you an, an encoded text with some custom algorithm, anything from rotation to transposition, like all kinds of different stuff. And basically, you had to solve that. And there weren't any hints. It was just, here's a ciphertext, give me back the plain text. And it, one of the other challenges that we had was it had to get harder as the contest progressed. I mean, if people were just battling back and forth, you know, two people know how to solve it, they're just going to script it, and then, you know, the server's going to get DOSed. So what we had to do was we had to make the challenges get more difficult over time at you know a reasonable rate so that people would always be able to try it and have fun. Um, so the crypto was a whole lot of fun. Um, we had some games like I did Hangman where basically you had to guess the, you know, it was Hangman. And uh, there were some different, it was web-based, you could do some different uh, injection attacks and stuff like that. Or you could just try and play Hangman and win. So, you know, however you want to attack it, by all means. <laughs> um, what else did I do? Uh, oh, one year we had uh, a whole economy set up because the, uh, one of the things we got from, I think it was year three, is someone came up and was like, you know, I really like your contest, but, and, and it's a great challenge, but it's not really like, you know, real life. I mean, this crypto stuff's cool and all, but, you know, I'm, I'm not going to, you know, come out in the wild and say, oh, look, I'm telling it it is something, and it's giving me back a crypto, you know, it's just not going to happen. And all the, you know, real crypto is, you know, actually secure where you're not going to break it in a reasonable amount of time. So, like, I'm not going to give you that, and it's you know, more or less impossible. And if you do break it, you know, you're not going to, you know, release it here at OCTF, so you're probably going to do something else with it. Um, so what we did was we set up an entire economy. We had a bank, we had an ice cream shop, we had uh, an auction, a whole bunch of stuff. And we had different flags, you know, hidden within and, you know, basically all the websites you could hack or, you know, you could just try and manipulate the system to get what you want. Uh, more money, more credit, more stuff at the auction. We even auctioned off stuff like uh, trash from the, you know, ice cream shop, which had hints on, you know, different things on how to score. Uh, what else we have? Oh, we would oh, I was like, and, and what's great about the economy is just like the real economy, it, it kind of crashed and fell apart. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. And that, that was before it existed. So, okay. Yeah. <laughs> uh, what else did I do? Uh, Notable. There was the uh, drop down. Oh, letter drop. That one? Yeah, that one, I did a really interesting crypto one where normally you substitute one letter for another. Well, with this one, it wasn't that at all. You just rearranged the letters and you got your plain text. And that one, did anyone get that one? Uh, I think someone got it, but it was like, everyone thought it was super hard and it's like, all you have to do is rearrange the letters, guys. It's an anagram. <laughs> it's not that tough. It was like 12 characters. Come on. So it was really interesting to see, you know, 
you do things like that that you think, oh, this is gonna get, you know, smashed in the first 10 minutes. And you know, to sit there for like three hours and like people know it's there, people are trying. And you walk around and like people are trying like things you're like, okay, I, I don't know why they're trying that, but you know, good luck. <laughs> Um, anyways, it's been a lot of fun. I've learned a lot. Uh, had good times with all the contestants. Pretty much know them all by name now. Um, and uh, we had a great run. And hopefully, I'm going to go check out what the, the two boyers are doing over there after I get done talking. Who's next? Nice idea, sure. What's that? So, um, well, I only recently joined the uh, 949 crew, and you know when they say that anybody can just come up and help them out, they're not lying about that. My first uh, DEF CON was DEF CON 16, and I saw OCTF, and I was like, this is really cool, and these are some cool guys. I'm going to go meet up with them. And then the very next year, I was actually uh, working on a service for OCTF, and it was, it was a whole lot of fun to work with them. So the, this, I only had one service. But it was a big, massive service. Are any of you guys familiar with the text game Zork? OK, here's a few people. Good. So basically, what mine was was Zork with a zero, you know, because hackers love numbers. And um, what it was was you were in the NIST facility to imprison hackers because you know you don't want to put them in a regular prison because they're going to get the crap eaten out of them or something like that. So you put them in a prison hosted by the NIST or MITRE or whoever you really want to call it. And the idea was there was some B-tard guard who loved you and hackers because hackers are cool and he's just fucking retarded. So what he's going to do is he gives you some lockpicks to help you break out of the prison. And what you're going to do is all the guards are out at DEF CON right now because they love DEF CON too and there's only that one B-tard idiot there. So he helps you break out of prison. And the entire idea is for you to not necessarily break out of prison entirely, but to go to the, go to the yard and deface the flag with your team name. So what this involved was basically, it was exactly like a text-based adventure. You would have to pick your way out of your cell, then navigate the text-based maze and try to figure out how to go from one level to the next. And every door had a lock of some kind that you had to perform some sort of binary manipulation on it. You had to find out how to perform an exploit on the door. In some way or another, you had to get a key card and then a, a thumb drive so you could add an exploit onto your key card and then put it in the lock. And the lock would run the exploit and then you would get through the next level. And there was a final door, which is basically kind of like a, like, kind of like a, um, a key gen in a way, where it was basically a challenge response where uh, you would have to download the lock and reverse engineer it and try to figure out the algorithm. So when it gave you a question, you would have to give it a response. So as the game progressed, it would get harder and harder and harder. The exploits would get a lot more uh, difficult to perform or, or dif more difficult to figure out. Sometimes you would have to figure out where the address was going. Um, what else was there? Yeah, and the, the key generator got more and more obfuscated with every time. And how many of you guys play uh, uh, pa pen and paper games like uh, D20 games? If the DM told you explicitly to go somewhere and really, really, really told you to come somewhere, would you, would you follow them? Why would you follow them? That's so gullible. So here's what happened. Um, I, in, before you get to the library, which has a lot of key components, the descriptions of the rooms tell you, hey, by the way, you might want to go to the locker room. There's a lot of the locker room. I actually got compliments on the writing of it at least, so I mean, <laughs> yeah, and, and that was basically uh, how Zork went, and that was just a whole lot of fun to write. Who's next? So I think these guys kind of understate uh, the wacky antics 
that um, contestants do during the game. That was seriously like 80% of the fun every year that we ran it. It was just seeing the hairball schemes people would pull in the middle of the game. Like Adam was over there talking about Defconomy and how, oh yeah, it was funny because it crashed. What was really funny is after a while when people like, couldn't figure out a way to beat it, you know, to modify money, they'd just get up, walk around the room, start walking up to people's laptops. And